Hi there, this is Tina and Sasha here from Under Three Acres and today we're going to share with you some of the things that we have to do on the farm that don't come up every day, uh, like sending letters off to the RCMP, among other things. Oh, well, we're off to our first place. We're going to, oh my gosh, the ground <laughs> went really far down. <laughs> I should know that by now. Well, we're going to get our garlic. We've, we're buying some hardneck garlic. Um, we bought some. We just have to go pick it up in a town about, what is it, about half an hour, 40 minutes from here. Yeah, yeah, something like that, depending on which highway you take. Yep. And it's fall. Chicken. All right, let's go. So we're off. So the first place we have to go to get some gas. We haven't been anywhere for a while. We picked up groceries yesterday with the, our son's car. And uh, we did curbside pickup and they forgot some of our groceries, so we have to do that today as well. And depending on what's open, we're not sure. It's a stat holiday, but we're not sure what's all open. Some places are open, some places aren't open. And we'll just see if we can get some. We need one. We wanted to get some wood shavings for the coop and some rabbit feed. And yeah, we'll see what other errands we can all get done today. Because like I said, I don't know what's all open. We're going to get our garlic. Um, shout out to the Garlic Ranch over in Sundry. And they're in Alberta, obviously. And uh, yeah, we're ordering garlic from them for the first time. We lived in the city. I think I ordered from Memphis somewhere. And Turn we right. grew garlic in our raised beds. But last year, because of the move, we didn't end up buying any. And so I didn't plant any. But this year, I'm gonna make it a point to get some garlic in the ground. This is the winter hardy um, hardneck garlic and hope it does well. I've got some shavings, well rotted uh, chicken shavings from last winter. I've got a heap of them that I've been putting in the garden the and I wanna side. use those. Turn right onto Highway 2A. <laughs> okay, then turn right onto Township Road 344. The GPS is constantly interrupting here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we're going over to, well, first we're gonna get some gas and then we're gonna go get some garlic. And we're hoping to get that in the ground in the next week or so. And they said any time after the harvest moon, which was last this past week, so I don't know. I don't feel like going out in the garden when it's like really, really cold. So we've been having a beautiful fall. It's been really, really warm. So I'll show you some of the leaves as we drive by here. garlic order and we're back to we're gonna be going back to uh, the other town we got our groceries from yesterday it's kind of everything out here is kind of far apart so we try not to go grocery shopping and do errands very often because it's it's a time suck it takes up so much time to get all these things done so yeah um, I got this really cute little note with our garlic See that from the garlic ranch they have a little card and she left a little cute note can't read it lighting's bad but it's really cute um so if you're in the area i think they still have some garlic left you can order some garlic from the garlic ranch and yeah i hope it, i hope it does well um here's hoping because um yeah i haven't planted garlic in a few years and i didn't raise beds this time i'll be doing it ground so yeah just never know especially with the weather we've had and tend to have so yeah this ride's really bumpy i'm <laughs> sorry about that just driving along my chauffeur <laughs> very exciting huh? so what have you all got going on today whatever you have whatever i tell you to do yeah, yeah. good man good, good answer man. drove by on our way. You excited? You're gonna look like the employees. I know, right? <laughs> it's kind of nice doing these kind of drives once in a while. We leave the kids at home. We just get some time 
to ourselves. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> oh man. It's nice though to just look at the fall leaves and how pretty it is. And yeah, you can, this camera doesn't do any justice. It's so pretty. over there. Yeah, it's kind of more cows. Yeah, this camera is not doing any justice. The windshield's filthy. <laughs> it's our farm vehicle. We have to fill out some paperwork later on today. Our pigs are going to be butchered tomorrow. I'm a little bit I don't know, sad about it. Like we were talking about this the other day. We're kind of sad. They've kind of grown on us, but we did raise them for meat for our family. And tomorrow is the day someone's coming out to dispatch them. And they'll be gutted and taken to the butcher in the town we, we just were in. And uh, then we'll get a phone call and have to pick them up. But today we have to make the difficult decision of what cuts we want, whether we're going to get sausage or ground pork from some of it, or whether we want the hawks smoked to put the soups. We haven't decided yet. It's our first time, so we're really not sure what we want uh, on cuts because we don't really know what we'll use the, the most. Um, I think a lot of roasts for sure because we're a large family and those seem to be a really good idea. Um, when we buy pork from the farmer that we've been buying for for oh, probably 10 years now, um, daughter's text. Um, we've been we we just tend to get the cheapest cuts, whatever's on sale, and so it's kind of a luxury for us to be getting some of the cuts because they're generally unaffordable for us. Yeah. So it's smoked stuff. And smoked stuff, and and it's all gluten free, which is wonderful. I don't want to get sick. I don't want any of the kids getting sick. And, you know, we've put a lot of love and care into raising our two pigs and they've kind of grown on us. They've got quite little characters. I was out there yesterday giving them a back rub. I can go and give them, you know, they, they are friendly. They'll let you pet them and everything. And we were trying to measure them up. There's a formula that you can use um, to measure approximate live weight. So it's two times the girth, which was hard to get. That measurement is hard to get on pigs. Even though they are friendly, they just didn't want to be measured <laughs> or sized up. And then the times, so the, the girth squared times the length divided by 400 will give you the approximate live weight. And then a friend of mine said, if you multiply that by I think 72%, so 5.72, you're gonna get the approximate um, wrapped weight, like the, the dead weight, like what you get back in pounds of meat. So we're expecting quite a bit of meat. Um, we think they're between 230 and 250 pounds. Like we've got a female and we've got a, bar a barrow, so um, a castrated male. And so we, they look pretty good. We just, um, yeah, we're not sure, but we're, we're hoping for the best. And yeah, there's other things that need to be done on the farm. So like, yeah, that paperwork needs to be done today is to fill that out and see how we want to get them wrapped get up. Them back, yeah. yeah, how do we want to see them again? Um, <laughs> boxes. boxes. And um, well, we're definitely gonna get some bacon. We don't need a lot of bacon. We haven't eaten a lot of bacon. It's been really expensive. So this is gonna be a real treat. Um, and I have some plans to do some, some beans and stuff and some, some Canadian pea soup, the Habitat pea soup. I want to can some of that, so I definitely need some ham, but I, I believe it's not safe to can smoked meat. So I need to make sure that I get some meat back that's not smoked and so I can use that for my canning recipes. And yeah, so it's all new to us. Some of the other things we need to get done today are um, we need to stop at the feed store. We need to get some shavings to add to the coops. Um, we're doing the deep 
bedding method, I think is what it's called, where you don't scrape out and clean out the coop every week or whatever, or every couple weeks. You let it ferment, basically. So you add new on top and they stir it up. And well, we rake it up too, we stir it up. And what happens is as it breaks down, it produces heat. And we use that sort of to, sort, to supplement. We don't actually heat our coop in the winter. So we're using that as a method to add warmth to the coop, as well as um, last year we had straw bales outside, but we did move them at the end of winter this year. So uh, they were fine last year. And then we have to do something with the turkey coop. We wanna, but that's not today. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna do for the coop where the turkeys are in, what we're gonna do to give them a bit more, um, cause we're not gonna heat in there. Um, it's even though the winters get really cold here, birds have feathers and they are, um, they're win we got winter hardy breeds and we tend to, to breed a lot of what we already have. So a lot of the, the chickens that we've bred on our own farm are hardier just because they've lived through the winter and they've bred their own. So they will end up being hardier than purebreds from other places. So yeah, there's that. And what else have we got going on today? Well, I want to try to get some canning done. We got some potato, uh, tomatoes, potato, I can't, I can't speak today. That's a common theme. <laughs> I do this all the time. I, um, I've got some tomatoes that we peeled and chopped up the other day and we didn't, I didn't have time yesterday because we had online class and a bunch of stuff going on. So I couldn't get those canned up yesterday. So I'm hoping to make some, sauce. yes, some yeah. wing sauce. almost done our errands. We stopped at Walmart. They had pumpkins for $2.47 each. I want to cut some of those up to give to the chickens for a treat. And yeah, we're right now at the farm store and uh, Sasha's in there. He's ordering the bales of shavings and some rabbit food. So I'm just going to wait out in the car. They have limits on how many people can go in there. I figured only we don't need to both be in there. So he's going to do that. Did you get them? Yeah. While you order them. So now we have to go line go up. Pick it up, yep. Yeah. It's 
busy in there for Thursday morning. It is, yeah. Right, so. so, in case you've never been, um, you order inside the, the, the bigger things and then they have sheds outside here. So you can see in front of me and then they've got, okay, so this guy in front of us is getting bales of shavings. Got. And so you stop here where it says over there, stop for service and they load you up. And back in that barn back there, or shed or whatever you want to call it, is where you get the feed. And then they load you up with that as well. If you have that and then we've come for what was it? Fence posts once? What were we here for? We were behind the building. They have like different buildings. The panels, the hog panels. Was that here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. here. The hog T -post, panels and the T panels, panels and stuff. Post, fence post. Yeah, and then you yeah. go wherever they tell you. Okay, we gotta stop here. Hey. Shavings and rabbit food. Yep. All right. I'll get you to pull ahead a little bit further. Right here. Okay. Open up. So I gotta jump through the back to get the shavings. The back door doesn't work. So I had to hop through and open it from the inside. Like the door works, it's just the latch is broken off on the outside. So now we just have to drive ahead to the other shed, get the rabbit food, and then we just stop with the mail, and then we can go home. First mission accomplished. Guy said it was really busy. Yeah. He's helping two of us at the same time. It's crazy. I'm just gonna drive around the back. So yeah, there's they have everything here, like lumber, they've got different sacks and stuff. I don't it's hard to show you guys. Different feed troughs and different things everywhere. Yeah, we've gotten lumber here before. And Look at you. This was one of our favorite places to come when we first moved to the country, I think. Yep. Expensive it, too. It was, <laughs> yeah, it can be. They sometimes have really good sales, but yeah, it's, it was a lot of fun when we first came here. We didn't realize there was this whole world outside the city. <laughs> Two city slickers here. Remember the first rabbit food we got? The little bags? Yeah. Well, when we had a rabbit, oh my gosh, that was years ago in the city. We would get these little, you know, doll, not dollar store, um, you can get pet them in a store. pet store. Rabbit food. And it was kind of expensive. Like, it didn't seem like it was that bad, but it wasn't a very big bag. And if you just have one pet rabbit, it's no big deal. But we have had quite a few rabbits. We bred some and we sold a lot of them. I think we're looking for a bigger breed of rabbits. Um, a few indoor rabbits too. So when somebody said get, well when my, I think it was when our daughter bought her Holland Lop, um, that's when we, she said get Country Junction rabbit feed. And I said okay, where do you get that? And it was at the UFA. And so it's like $20 a bag. For 40 pound bag or something. 40 or 50 pound bag. Yeah. 20 kilo bag or something? 20 kilos for $21.99. Wow, that's one up too. That's going up. It used to be $19.99 and then it went up to $20.99. Now it's $21.99. But it's still a lot cheaper than buying the stuff from the pet store, especially if you have a number of rabbits. One of these bags lasts us quite a while because we don't have that many rabbits. And then we got hay from a farm somewhere west of us and yeah so it's interesting when you live out in the country there's all these places that you didn't even know existed and we knew a few farmers because we sourced our meat outside of the city but there's a fun world outside <laughs> where you can find all kinds of cool stuff let me show you a picture Let's see if it focuses just some really cool stuff. Like PV Mart. Like we knew of PV Mart because we bought our can pressure canner at PV Mart before moving out of the city, but our son went and picked that up because they didn't have any in the city. Like you couldn't find a pressure canner back in March of, or April, May, 
I think we got ours in May of 2020 and there weren't any anywhere to be found. I guess, I don't know, everybody got the homesteading bug at the beginning of 2020 and oh, there was a run on the farm stores and stuff, but it's a lot of fun going to the farm stores. We, we've found things in there. Like we had some plumbing issues with our wash machine and we called our plumber friend in the city and he told us where he gets the parts and what parts to get. And we were in the feed store for feed. We was like, hmm, they have some plumbing things. Let's take a look around the corner. And they had all the parts for a fraction of the cost yeah. of what they would have cost if our friend had got them, got them for us at the plumbing, plumbing stores, like the wholesale or like where plumbers go to get plumbing stuff. So that was really interesting what else have we got in there we've gotten you know obviously feed and stuff um, oh, card games. oh yeah card games we've gotten uh, we got the heated dog bowl so we have a dog bowl that's heated you can plug it in in the winter and we use that to give the chicken water what and what else did we get there? We've got some really weird things there that were a lot of fun. We've gotten seeds, obviously. We picked up our chicks at the UFA. Um, yeah, that, that was the weirdest. That was, that was interesting, too, because, like, you see on a lot of these homesteading channels where they go to, uh, what is it, Tractor Supply in the United States, and I've never been. Like, someday we'll, we will do that <laughs> just for fun. But we're in Canada, so, like, when you order chicks from um, a hatchery here, they usually send them by post or you can pick them up at a local farm store they don't actually have the chicks in the farm store like you see in, in the states like so that was really interesting you just order and you don't know what you're gonna get and you go up to the counter and you hear all this beep 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 in a box and they give you your box and you're on your jolly way so it's it's a it's a different life and like we're learning we've been here almost a year now and we're learning a lot and we have so much to learn. It is, it's been a huge learning curve, right? Like huge learning curve. There were so many things we didn't know. There's still so many things we don't know. And getting to know people who know things is kind of hard. Like we've had a lot of lockdowns and there've been limits on people that go into the stores. A lot of the meetings and um, the shows, like if you wanted to like go to a chicken show, like, you know, like, you know, prize winning chickens and all that kind of stuff. They, all that was closed down before we moved to the country. So we haven't gotten to know people who are experts in their in their own right. Like I think they, the, 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 there was a fiber um, fiber festival a couple weeks ago that was still allowed to run. And that was before they added more restrictions again. We're back under a lot more restrictions again. So a lot of things are being shut down and now you need to be or have passes to get into a lot of things. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the winter's like. I know the feed stores, as far as I'm concerned, like we know are all, um, you don't need any special papers to go to feed stores and stuff like that yet. So that's what we So we need to know people. in other places but here in Canada 
in order to purchase a gun or ammunition, you need a gun license. And or it's, a, it's called a PAL, a Purchase and Acquisition License. And you have to take a safety course from a certified trainer. You have to pass a test at the end of the course. And then you have to fill out all the paperwork and get people to you know, vouch for you that you are who you say you are. And then you send your paperwork in and then you'll get a card so that when you want to purchase a gun or ammunition or anything that requires that. Um, I don't, you don't need it to buy a gun case. You don't need it to buy gun cleaning material, but you do need it for ammunition and for guns. Yep. And we didn't ever think we would need a gun, like in the city, like we never felt like we needed a gun when we lived in the city. But the other morning, it's been quite warm here. I mentioned that earlier. It's been quite warm here. So I had the window open and it was, I think between six and 6.30 a.m. So it was still black outside. And there, all of a sudden, I could hear the meat chickens. And we have them in the yard in the pen, locked up at night. And they were screaming. Look, I've never heard chickens squawk like this before. So I knew something was out there, but I didn't know what was out there. I would have really have liked to have a gun to go out in the morning. I went out with a broomstick handle, okay guys? I went out with a broomstick handle, made a bunch of noise, I tripped the light sensor, the light went on, and whatever it was, ran away. Cause I, then I ran back in, grabbed a flashlight, cause I didn't have one. I'm like, I can't see anything. I tripped the light, but I couldn't see anything. Tripped the light, went back out to, to check on the chickens. They were, all of them were huddled in one corner of, a, of the run. Except for one. Except for one. He was, or yeah, it was, I think it was a, he or she. I don't know. I don't remember. There was one lone meat chicken just standing by the food, just going like, what's going on? What happened? <laughs> like everybody else was in a pile over on the other side. Even so, a pellet gun would have been good. Uh, well, but you, you need a license for that too. Right. You need a, a license here in Canada to own an air rifle or pellet gun. Anything that looks like a gun, you need a license to have. Well, like, except for like toy guns. But I mean, you know what I mean. So we had planned on getting this a long time ago, but with restrictions, a lot of the courses were either canceled or were really limited well, capacity. Crazy. And they were crazy books. So we were lucky to get get a class last month and get that done. So now we're just we have to send away our paperwork. So and they said they're they're backlogged. So I don't know. We were told six months. We'll see when we get our gun license. So. We won't be able to hunt this year, not that we were planning on it, but it would have been really nice to have had our own gun. I just would have felt safer going out there in the dark, because you were already gone to work. You were gone. I was all by myself. The kids are all sleeping. I was the only one awake, and uh, yeah. Well, and then we did go out and see there. there is evidence that an animal was trying to get into the run, but they didn't get in, obviously, and I had scared them away just in the nick of time, but it would have really felt better to have a gun. I, I don't know if I would have shot it, but just having one <laughs> I think would have made me feel feel better. And yeah, like we all we learned in the course was how to load and unload and then all of the safety things, like how to keep it, where to store it, how to store it safely, how to store your ammunition, um, and a bit of the history on guns and, and all that kind of stuff and what's allowed, what's not allowed, so that we can purchase guns a gun well a shotgun is probably what we're gonna buy first and um, probably air yeah, rifle well, pellet gun something like that too as well yeah. yeah and then we'll set up target practice in the back where there's where it's safe so we can practice and if we if we can and if there's like the opportunity because of restrictions and stuff if we can we would like to take a course a safety course like, not a safety course like a handling a hand like how to how to use a gun how to shoot a gun and all that kind of stuff so that if we needed to use it or if we wanted to use it to go hunting we would know what we're doing okay so now we're at the post office okay here goes nothing there's there four go. of us yep. applying for a gun license okay we'll see you in a second only three people are allowed in the post office at once so again I'll just sit here and talk to you guys yeah so with the gun license and how things work here. That's that's just how it is. And I never thought I would be a gun owner. I never thought, but living out in the country, it would be really nice. We have a lot of predators. We've seen wolf tracks. We've never seen a wolf. Uh, last week we saw a lynx on our property. Hubs saw 
badgers a couple times and these aren't like the pretty ones that you see like in the wind in the willows or you know in Britain these are like crazy like vicious things so um, yeah we see lots of deer obviously and we have coyotes we hear them all the time so uh, and then we see we see um, foxes quite regularly as well so we just want to make sure that we are protecting our livestock we're protecting our property and you know, for Canadians it's weird right like because we wouldn't have thought of it like there's this weird thing in Canada where like it's taboo to talk about guns it's taboo to at all whereas you you see the American homesteaders and like everybody has guns everybody talks about guns you see American preppers everybody has guns everybody has ammunition everybody talks about it and here it's taboo so we're gonna be talking about guns probably in the future and we'll see how that goes <sighs> yep he's just asking if he should drop them in the box and they're gone they're on their way to the RCMP in New Brunswick out east and we'll see how long that takes to hear back from them and see when we get our gun license. And yeah, we want, we want to be responsible gun owners. We have children in the home. And I don't take this lightly. We had, what's that? Oh, it's something you don't have to miss city either. It's our rental renewal for our post box. Oh, okay. I know, eh? Rental renewal, for, what do we have to do? I don't know if they're close. It's a federal Oh, holiday. it's a holiday today. That's right. So we can we still pick up our mail but yep, we, and drop off tomorrow. mail. I guess just renew it. Okay. Yeah, because you rent your postal box. Like, we don't have a it mailbox. Cost anything. Yeah, it doesn't cost us anything. We just have to renew it. Um, I guess we'll have to do that every year. I think yep. it says yearly. There are a lot of things in the country that we didn't know even were an issue. Like, you don't get your mail sent to your home. Like, if the very odd time a delivery of truck will come with something. Starling came to the door. Like they came to the door, that was FedEx. But most things, even if they are FedEx or Perlator or any of that kind of stuff, don't come to the door. They come to the post office or some depot somewhere. Like we have to drive to the next town north of us to get anything from FedEx, Perlator, and if it said USPS, it might be sent to the post box. It might be sent to a depot. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so forget Amazon. Yeah, Amazon one day doesn't exist Amazon out here. Amazon Prime, delivery 24 hours, forget it. <laughs> forget doesn't, it. Doesn't work. I ordered something. At least two days. I ordered a book for my kid's class um, last Tuesday. It was yeah. supposed to be your Thursday because we have Prime. It's a week later Thursday and I still don't have the book. So, yeah, Prime isn't great. Internet wasn't great until we had Starlink. Um, there's a lot of just stuff that you have to take care of, like your P.O. box, um, just stuff that we never even dreamed existed before. We're gonna have to clean up the wood stove, get it ready for the winter. Yep. I wanna polish it up. You're gonna do some painting behind the wood stove. The, the, we've got this, what do you check call Check the septic. Yeah, we've got to check on the septic lines. as well. And we want to make see if it needs to be pumped. Just stuff, just everyday stuff. That's not everyday stuff. This is just like stuff that country bumpkins have to take care of that we didn't know. I remember the first time I looked in the septic, I called my friend who lived out in the farm. I was like, is this normal? No, I, took like, pictures. I took pictures. It was it was hilarious. Pictures too, right? And I sent you pictures yeah. because I I didn't know what it, I knew what it looked like when we had done the um, inspection. And the guy who did the septic, he had us look at it and showed us, and it looked very different than after it was pumped. After well, it was apparently, pumped. it depends who uses it. How well your micro it looks different. Yeah. So I didn't need to know that, but. Yeah, we learned a lot of stuff about stuff <laughs> that we didn't know before. And just, yeah, like just getting, to, we actually like look at animal tracks now in the city. It was kind of like, oh, let's do nature study and take the kids out and see if we can find tracks in the winter. And then we saw wolf tracks and it was like, we took pictures, sent them to the neighbor. I said, well, you don't these are wolf fun. tracks, right? And he's like, yeah, and he's got chickens as well. So he's like, and that's his livelihood. Like he does chickens as a livelihood. So. 
Yeah, he's like, okay, if I'm gonna go find check them, it out. You wanna know what it is. Right, right. And so, and we heard some weird noises the other night, and we we were pretty sure it was a lynx. We looked it up, we heard some noises, we looked, listened to some recordings, and then one of the kids saw the lynx. Um, so yeah, there's just crazy wildlife around here, and there's hawks and stuff too. Whenever I hear hawks, I just, I run out and get all the chickens slifey put in the coop. Um, and weather, we watch weather patterns. We never did that before. We just like, oh yeah, it looks like it might rain, you know? But we did like in, when we had the garden and stuff, but, and we would tarp things. But here it's like, we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And if you, you know, there's a tornado warning, you're kind of scared, you know? Cause like, you're not used to this kind of thing. You're, you know, it's not like collective and you have a whole bunch of neighbors and, and all that kind of stuff. Got a helper. You coming to help? Uh, yeah, we're gonna check for eggs. Okay, good Where's job. Going? Go check for eggs. Yeah, we're, oh no, chickens are molting again. Some of them, they take turns molting so we never get a ton of eggs. Like we expect we should be getting a lot more eggs than we are now, so. We changed their feed last week. Again, like we'd been getting it local. Well, we, the other place we go, oh, sorry. I'll be trying to park and I'm like in the mirror. <laughs> um, well, that's the thing nobody told us either. The different feeds have different... Feed is not feed. Yeah, feed is not feed. So we have this one place where we get the feed, but it's further away and... So, yeah, we weren't driving there because it was like, ah, in the summer, it's just get it local. And so... Then they... They were doing fine for most of the summer and then right now they started molting and they just haven't picked back up. And we've been giving them uh, black, what do they call it, the black oil sunflower seeds and we've been giving them lots of stuff from the garden. Any luck? Any eggs? No. Okay. Well, we're home. Let's unload the car. So we got a lot of our paperwork done. I think we know what we're ordering on our meat. Uh, we filled up the paper anyway. <laughs> we'll see. We got to get uh, the tractor in place. We got the tractor. Well, you put some air in the tire and then started driving it to where we need it to be tomorrow and it died. So we're going to see if we can get it started. I'm not. He is. Yeah. <laughs> see if we get it started. Otherwise, the neighbor is going to bring over probably a tractor or skid steer tomorrow and, uh, and do what we got to do. So check out these colors here. Sun's going down. The Ohio Buckeyes over here already lost all their leaves. All right, I'm gonna turn it around. Cross our fingers and say a prayer. Sometimes it started today, no problem. Yeah. And then you put some air in the tire, and then you went to start it again, and it, and it didn't. It started, it got this far, and then it died. It died, yeah. I love the fuel on this car. I don't know. <laughs> Hi. You give me kisses. Yeah. Put them on the, the deck. On the deck? Yeah. Okay. You got there, muscle man. Just a pumpkin. A big pumpkin. It's got a big handle. Perfect. Oh, look at that. It's got two of them. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a good day? Yeah. Yeah? Mom and Dad had a lot of work to do today, huh? Yeah. And that gave me and Pat a lot of time to draw. Oh yeah? What'd you guys draw? Well, so far I've got half of Hulk done. Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk? Yeah. Cool. 
So Dad's just finishing up putting away the feed and stuff that we got today. And then we're gonna settle in. Uh, Owen's filling up the duck pools. Ducks are in bed. We're gonna fill up the pools tonight so they're ready for them in the morning. All the animals feed has been topped up. Here comes the man of the hour. Takes a while to fill, eh? It's getting dark out. We gotta get to bed early tonight. What's what's happening tomorrow? Um, tomorrow the pigs are being butchered, I think. Yep, so we gotta be up because the yep. guy's coming at seven. You, do you got your gun license yet? Well, we sent it away today. Why? You're getting it later? Well, you have to send it in and then they will, they have to call your references and then they'll send you a card. That's why we had to give them pictures. You know, it would be cool if you get to shoot the pigs, if you got to shoot the pigs. Yeah? Yeah, that would be really cool. Why is that? I don't know, shooting a gun at a live animal? That's kind of scary though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, That's we'll have to see. Moving. Yeah, we'll have to watch how he does it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then see if we do it next year ourselves. Hopefully you do. You put the feed in the cooler, you saw that? Yeah. Getting tired? No, I got that in my I thought you were being sentimental. Yeah. Someone's in his buggy going for a walk. We're gonna go for a little walk. So yeah, we're, we usually end our day, well not end it, end it, but we just take a little walk with the dog, with some or a lot of our children. Not all usually. <laughs> and just enjoy the last few warm days. Check the weather forecast at dinner time tonight and yeah, there's some flakes in the forecast. I don't know if we'll get them next week. So we'll see. We'll keep you up to date. So. Yeah, you're, thanks for joining us today on our just day of errands and odds and ends and lots of decisions to make and we're going to enjoy this beautiful weather and see you in the next video. Bye. Going down this road.